I had previously come across the idea of sin being initials for simulated interactive nature. Simulated as in not true, interactive as it demands our investment in it, and nature because of its all-encompassing quality. What is obviously implied is that sin always has the potential to be forgiven. Therefore, if we realize that reality is this sin thing, that sin is a state of existence, not an action or a judgment. What I mean by this is that in the same way reality possesses our minds, by being persistent and overwhelming in the same frequency our sensors have been programmed to interact with, so does the state of sin, as sin is a tone of reality that is taken over, absorbed by ourselves. I will firstly then have to emphasize again that our bodies and minds are constructs of reality, and so need reality elements to coexist coherently. It is our true essences, let's call them that, that do not require any reality constructs. Nevertheless, the fact that reality is a requirement for our construct existence does not imply that it needs to seep its color into ours. I'll use a metaphor for clarity. Imagine that our bodies are bags of semi-permeable material, and that our minds are water or liquid contained in that bag. Our minds are, therefore, a concentrated mixed solution that act not only as our personality, but also thoughts and memory, as well as other processes. Now, reality will be dyed with several colors, and as we interact with it, there will be a constant attempt of reality elements to penetrate, join and change the water within the bag, through osmosis, as reality is a less concentrated solution, being more disperse than our minds. So, possession, which was the term I used, is the water in the bag being changed by an external dyed liquid, thus altering the actual state of the internal water. It is the same with sin and temptation, if we carry that metaphor to better understand them. In the metaphor, any water is already sin existence, so it is impossible to completely seal off interaction between the external and the internal liquids, as the internal came from the external metaphorical reality liquid to begin with. However, the external will continuously attempt to completely take over the internal, and the first step for that is temptation. In the metaphor, temptation is the initial contact of a less concentrated, dyed or tainted external solution, which can come from another person's bag already tainted content, with our semi-permeable bag surface. Whether we allow that dyed or tainted liquid, which is possessing emotion, to enter and change our internal liquid or mind, represents our response to that temptation. I will also note something that is overlooked often by various religions when addressing this subject. It is not only not possible to completely shut off interaction with external metaphorical liquids, regardless of their pleasant or unpleasant color, it is also not healthy to our internal liquids in the metaphor to attempt that. It is not healthy. We must realize, accept and come to terms with the undeniable fact that our representation in reality is itself a construct that was built to rely and depend on interaction, be it a communication such as we are having here, be it to merely consume to maintain the bag. It is inescapable to our metaphorical bag selves. However, what we truly are is not the metaphorical water or liquid, but metaphorical light. Now, light can enter the bag, if so allowed, and change the color of its liquid content, transmuting its appearance towards sheer brightness. Absence of light, on the other hand, will make the color more solid, so to speak, more pronounced in its tonality. Please note, this is not about the liquid's color being more pleasing or displeasing than another. Any color is prone to possessing the inside of the bag, and the purification, if you can put into perspective the usage of that word, is to have true light, which represents what we actually are in this metaphor, to turn any color into brightness. 
Therefore, still using the same metaphor, if a light source shines on the liquid, it will immediately change the appearance of its color to a lighter degree. For the sake of the metaphor, let's assume that this change in perceived tonality brought about by the light is not just a perception, but actual color change. What happens when a bright enough light shines on the liquid? After a certain threshold of intensity, it will simply be perceived as light, regardless of the color of the liquid within the bag. So when connection to the metaphorical light source, ineffable truth, is established by allowing light as well as liquid to permeate the bag, the liquid's color is purified because it does not matter its hue as it will become bright light and nothing more. Now our bag's membrane can, like a chameleon, change its color to match the environment and to, more significantly, prevent the light from freely entering the bag and shining on the inner liquid. This color change, to shut away light, is when we here incorporate, that is, become possessed by emotions, colors, so that the membrane itself, the bag, closes itself away from light. This is just a metaphor for the sake of communication of knowing, so do not take any of this literally, of course. The light is our truth. When we fell down to the liquid state, so to speak, and became bags of that liquid, metaphorically, we fell to the state of sin or evil. To harbor, therefore, any color is to be in the state of sin. But, as mentioned previously, not only our existence in this realm or reality implies sin coexistence and interaction, it is also all purified by our truth, by establishing a connection to that light source so that it shines on the liquid, which is the mind, to dissipate all color, that is, to purify all addicting emotion. From this, we can more clearly realize that sin, therefore, is not an action but a state, that simulated interactive nature I began this contemplation with. And this is where forgiveness comes in, which I will go into shortly. Sin is the state of reality we occupy, a liquid vat or lake filled with wandering clouds of different colors, some pleasant, some unpleasant, but all equally impure in comparison to the independent life we are. These colors are necessary to interact with to be able to realize who and where we are. They will continuously try to, through osmosis, possess us, make us one of them, make us forget even further who we are. Eventually all colors will unite in the reality and become one until they all burst out into separation again for a new cycle. This is not, I repeat, this is not liberation, just a new cycle. This shows the real colors and intent behind the rainbow ensign flag so prevalent nowadays, doesn't it? It is not about one color or many, it is about just light, which is what we are. This is why I previously contemplated on the we are all one meme, which you can re-listen on the video identified as one, and emphasized the correction of it to we are all parts or aspects of one. We are all one means we are all possessed by the liquid, being bags. We are all parts or aspects of one means we are independent, individuals of the same living light, but unpossessed and uncreated. So it is not the action of osmosis interaction with the clouds of colors in the reality that is of true importance, but the allowance or allowing the light to purify the colors. This is true Forgiveness. False forgiveness will focus on the action to be judged. You shouldn't have done this or that. While true forgiveness will focus on the state of the liquid inside. You should not become or be possessed by this or that. Nevertheless, forgiving an action is a useful way to forgive and purify a state. It is a shortcut for sure. Imagine someone provokes possessing emotional content in you with an action. False forgiveness will be about how the action itself that triggered the possession will be judged. True forgiveness will be about either not allowing the possession to take place or to purify it by removing its significance. It is as if you replaced the word forgiveness with let go. It can be seen how 
Forgiveness or letting go of the trigger action can be a good and helpful shortcut to forgiving or letting go of the possessing, possessing emotion. The seven deadly sins are then, in this perspective, seven types of emotional possession that keep us dead, that is, that prevent light from purifying the color of the liquid, liquid within, still using that metaphor. The process of possession is usually temptation causing reaction or effect, and then causing embodiment, which is the stage that opens the metaphorical membrane on the bag for the external color to seep in. This color can then be carried and thrown at others to infect their metaphorical bags as well as a metaphorical virus. It may be helpful to review the spells and rituals contemplation on this matter. This is important to understand because if it is a fact that we, as metaphorical bags in the lake of reality, can minimize but not entirely avoid the first two stages, temptation and reaction or effect, that means that we are in control and responsible, not guilty, but responsible, for the embodiment stage. Forgiveness is both to let go of an existing embodiment, or metaphorically having the light source shift the colors into brightness, and to decline the embodiment to even occur by letting the significance of the reaction or effect it caused to go. Forgiving the causer of the temptation helps a lot. It is a step towards purification because the only forgiveness needed is for our own metaphorical bag. Forgiveness for or letting go of being possessed or for and of a reaction, effect or action taken towards possession. Forgive yourself. Realize that each and every sin temptation is, at its core, fear. So let go of it. Do not fear what causes that reaction or effect. Otherwise, it will be a continuous struggle against embodiment by sin. Forgive yourself also when you fail, because it is only the construct part of you, made up, and in, made up of and inhabiting reality, that is subject to its temptations, and being made from them, it is expected to be so influenced. Perfection is not expected from the bag or the water it contains, in the metaphor. Your true being, the light, is immune to temptation and continuously tries to purify you. The true being knows your nature and forgives it. It is not your fault or responsibility. You are not its creator, but its driver and generator. Come up with creative solutions for letting go to forgive your guilt, but do not carry it around. Refer to the guilt and victimhood contemplation too, if you like. To help with this self-study, my girlfriend has recorded a few examples of thoughts. One example for each of the main seven deadly temptations towards the state of sin. Note that these are archetypical, and so each is meant to represent only one sin. However, in reality, Triggering thoughts and reactions or effects are always a mix and combination of several sin colors, so to speak, making them more complex. It is up to each of you to use this archetypal, um, archetypical basis as a means to understand the more complex reality triggers. I will not comment on them, but allow each of you to perform their own alchemy on each example. I hope they help. Wrath. I hate you for what you did, and I'll make sure to curse and hate you until the day I die. Gluttony. One more piece won't hurt me. I deserve it. Maybe, maybe two or three. Sloth. Damn you and your reasons. Too complicated. I wouldn't even do the effort of trying to understand you. Pride. This is not my fault. It's your fault. Why would I even be polite to that lowly life form? Lust. Come on, let's just party. Life's too short. Come rub yourself all over me and we'll call it dancing. Envy. He's too damn good at it and he doesn't even have to work hard for it. The bastard. Greed. That's not yours, it's ours. That's not ours, that's mine. I claimed it. 